What a night. What a night. How are the ninjas? Yeah. I couldn't be more honoured to be here and doing this, my role in uh, presenting and preambling this uh, prestigious honour to uh, my dear friends. So, it was 1976. I was a 19 year old kid from Pamua who wanted to be somebody. Music was all I thought about, all I knew, and I had a burning desire to rock. <laughs> Together with my two best friends, we were literally a garage band banging out impressive versions of songs by the Rolling Stones and the Doors from a burnt out garage out the back of Parnell. Filled with longing and high on hope, we adored the likes of Jagger, Richards, Morrison, and Reed, who seduced us with images from swinging London, LA, and New York. Then one day, something big happened. I saw a street poster advertising a band playing at a grubby city pub called The Kiwi. It was an A4 poster, but it may as well have been a Times Square-sized billboard. It stood out from the others for some reason. It called to me. Ian Morris and I went along, found ourselves a seat at the back, and changed our musical lives. Everything about this band was special, from their stage set, which included, uh, I think, a grill from a 57 Chev, and table lamps draped with scarves. To their clothes, they wore this crazy, wild amalgam of uh, pirate and rock and roll degenerate. To their girlfriends. Suddenly, on that autumn night in Wellesley Street, a door slowly creaked open to expose a strange, wild, and wonderful world that beckoned us in. How could we not? These five men were different. They were from another world, another time, telling tales of Ponsonby, but not the Ponsonby that we knew. It was the underbelly of Auckland, people by dodgy characters called Johnny the Creep and Jack Rabbit, who had hidden flick knives and hidden agendas. But the difference was that these guys looked as if they weren't making the shit up. These guys were the real deal. These guys were Hello Sailor. The next thing I remember was Sailor playing a three week stint at the Globe Tavern, Wednesday night to Saturday night. I went every night. I was a Hello Sailor groupie. <laughs> and they were certainly heroic. Picture this, Graham Brazier in leather trousers and ripped leopard skin top, all too tight to mention, just the right amount of mascara, a cigarette in one hand, a drink in the other, doing tricks with a tambourine that I later tried but could never master. There was no better frontman. He owned the stage, he owned the crowd, and they eagerly followed Sailor into a demimond of excess. They were the Stones, the Velvet Underground, and the New York Dolls all rolled into one, but they were also distinctly themselves. Graham, Dave, and Harry were telling their own stories about their own bohemian world, which wasn't overseas, but right here in Northcote, and in Grafton, and in the notorious Mandrax Mansion in Ponsonby. Their songs were about people on the edge and on the outer, thinly disguised references to the real life rock and roll riot that they were actually living. It was inescapable and it was blatant. They were the real deal and they were dangerous. It made me feel like a complete lightweight, an innocent, an ingenue, 
but I was nevertheless hooked. I bravely stepped forward one of those nights, introduced myself, and we've remained friends to this day. Sailor influenced us in so many ways. They were determined to write their own songs about their own experiences, their own adventures, and in their own language. And they did it in their own inimitable style. It was up to us as a young and up and coming band to go out there and find our own style, write our own songs. They showed us such color, not the grays and neutrals of 70s New Zealand, but the vermilion, the velvet, and the very special blue of a new tattoo. They had swagger, which was a quality not easily available in our town with the tall poppy syndrome, and only the brave would try it on. It made their live shows incredible, steaming and sexy stuff of legend wherever they went. They were at the vanguard of a new wave of New Zealand artists in the late 70s that opened up a new world of original music and entertainment. They broke records for crowd numbers on the national pub circuit and they made headlines for all the wrong reasons. But it only fueled the public's desire to vicariously experience the dark side. And by all accounts, when they went to America, they were this close to being the next big thing. But most of all people, they wrote great songs. Great songs, filled with wit and charm and honesty and humanity. I could, uh, I could stand here all night and tell you uh, stories which might shock you, which might delight you, but what happens on tour stays on tour. What I can tell you is one day I was paid the ultimate compliment. Graham was again suffering from um, a stomach ulcer, and as the band was booked to play a big string of dates, Dave and Harry rang me and asked me to fill in. A bit like asking the first 15 captain to step in for Richie McCaw. Well, I mean, I tried those uh, tambourine tricks, but I couldn't quite master them. And so I stand here today sometimes feeling all of this was a hundred years ago. But then again, I only have to hear that guitar riff or that cheeky blues harp and it all comes flooding back. <clears throat> Hello Sailor paved the way for me and many more like me. They are responsible for some of the best and most loved songs of our rock history. They're still here writing songs, passing on their voluminous wisdom and craft. Their significance as songsmiths and performers cannot be overlooked. And they are still making their unique style of rock and roll as wonderfully as they did 35 years ago. And damn, they still look good. Here is a visual salute to Hello Sailor. Here's one called Blue Lady. Hello Sailor to me are really the patriarchs, if you will, of uh, sex, drugs and rock and roll. Oh, I think they changed New Zealand music, New Zealand rock and roll music forever. They pretty much held up a sign to me going, this is the way. Some of those songs, you know, Gutter Black and Blue Lady and New Tattoo, you, you hear them over and over again, and that was a part of our cultural history. They're the real deal. What Hello Sailor did was make playing original music attractive because they, they, they attracted people because they had great songs, they delivered them really well, and you felt like you were seeing something unique. They packed the glue pot out if you you know, the glue pot holds, I think, of, legally at the time it used to hold about 600 people. I've seen them have 2,000 people in there. I think Prince Tui Teka was the only other person ever to do that. In those days, they had that allure of something sort of dark and mysterious and slightly, uh, slightly illegal. <laughs> <laughs> only slightly, though. Drinking rum and coca cola. We toured 40 odd venues throughout the country over a period of about a month. Nobody had ever charged for playing in pubs or clubs before, and this time it was a dollar. 
charge might have been $2. And at every single venue that was sold out and there were crowds going around the corner. Well, it had this special thing that no other band had. They were real. On record, they were as good as they were on stage. The two were absolutely complimentary. As a young boy, you know, hearing uh, those songs for the first time, hearing Blue Lady for the first time, I was like intrigued. Uh, I knew something was up. I didn't quite know what a Blue Lady was, but I was definitely um, keen to find out. Ooh, Blue Lady. Uh, Blue Lady, as a, as a, you know, as a ballad, just uh, blew me away. And so did Gutter Black. I don't think you could ask for a more perfect fit for a TV show and a theme song than Gutter Black. It's iconically Kiwi. The fans love that song. Robin Malcolm was saying, you know, it was made by Westie musicians for the Westies, you know, when they ruled the music scene. You and my brain, you and my Another great song they had was Lion on the Sand. But I just Because it showed another sign of him that was a pretty catchy song, as time has proved. David Gates really made the inspired move of bringing them to LA, uh, which uh, was a, a brilliant thing to do. And by the time we'd been there six months, Hello Sailor had picked up a really good American following with a good sprinkling of expat Kiwis as well. And we were headlining on Friday and Saturday nights. And were being seen by record companies. Yeah, they really were succeeding in the clubs. You know, the big clubs in LA at the time, like the Whiskey A Go Go and the Starwood Club in, in West Hollywood, uh, were packed out. You couldn't get in to see Hello Sailor. An act that we had quite a bit to do with was The Doors' Ray Manzarek, um, who ever since the death of Jim Morrison had been intent on reforming The Doors and looking for a um, charismatic front singer to replace Morrison. He immediately saw that Brazier had that potential. Good spotting, but it was not to be because I think Brazier was more interested in um, singing his own songs and doing his own thing with Hello Sailor. They were pretty tight and, and even Manzarek couldn't pull them apart. You know, there was huge parties going on up at their place and all of the, the LAPD had their eye on them and I think there was a feeling that maybe it was time to give that a rest and take them back home, take, get the heat off them for a little while and come back later on. But uh, wasn't how it worked out in the end. After six months, we still didn't have a record contract. We were negotiating with several companies and there was a lot of interest, but it just seemed to drag on. And in the end, we ran out of money. Really, they were so close to making it. They went through so much together, up and down and up again and whatever. They are a living engine, they're still bloody going today. And what's more, they're as good as ever. That's the extraordinary thing about it. Then come hell or high water, we're gonna, we're gonna survive, we're gonna play our guitars and make great music together. They really still have it. Graham Brazier walks on stage, bang, com commands it. The legacy is the swagger, the songs, and the delivery. And they're a fucking great rock and roll band. Ladies and gentlemen, individually, Graham Brazier, Harry Lyon, Dave McCartney, Ricky Ball, Paul Woolwright, and Stuart Pearce, flee up standing for Hello Sailor on your feet!
Thank you. Um, my world these days is more literary than musical, so I would like to firstly pay tribute to Caxton Press, which came out of Christchurch, Charles Brash and Dennis Glover, that instigated landfall, which for any of you future poets and short story writers, you must investigate. If you don't believe this, Dennis Glover said this, odd fish, I am an odd fish, a no hoper, amongst women a snapper, amongst men a groper. I think it was the other way around. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> I first joined APRA with Bernie Darby, reason I had written the song. So to all the musicians, crew, absent friends that have passed through the gates of Hello Sailor, the Pink Flamingos, Coup d'Etat, the Party Boys, the Legionnaires, we thank you. To our families and children who have followed us in various creative pursuits, we thank you. In these heads and tails, times of uncertainty, I am certain Music will continue to be, songs will continue to be written, will continue to make an oral backdrop to our lives. The people we wish to thank are too numerous, but as long as we have made some dance, <laughs> some tap a foot, I'm um, sorry, getting a little carried away here. Must be the wine. <laughs> Don't tell my AA people. Um, or, or whistle the tune. We can all take pride in this and the hope that the greater world may tap whistle, sing, and dance with future New Zealand songsters, songstresses, stresses and addresses, addresses and the known by only the oppressed and all great things that music is. Yeah, well said, Graham. Yeah, I mean, especially we like to acknowledge APRA. Uh, this is a great occasion, a great honour for us. And also, all, what thrills us to bits, really, as the ages go by, we've been around for a while, almost four decades, is all the young, up-and-coming talent, songwriting ability. It's, it's, it's extremely good. And it and it's, makes us very proud. Um, I'd like to just make a comment. Uh, in terms of absent friends, um, I'd like to thank the Mills family, um, Donna, Gabriel, Moana, and especially Colin, who said he passed away in 2005, who was responsible for the refurbishment of this wonderful building. Um, yep, thank you, Colin. <clears throat> it's the reason we're here tonight. Probably the reason we're here tonight, because she was a great mother and secondary mother to both Graham and myself. And just remember, youth will always fade away, but we can at least, hopefully, hang on to immaturity. <laughs> Thank you. My wife always teases me that there are far too many alpha males in our band that we could let one person only speak. <clears throat> um, I'd like to just acknowledge the, the other people that we feel honoured to be uh, company with, the uh, other people in the hall. My mother said, where is the hall? <laughs> I said, well, it's a virtual hall, Mum, <laughs> at this stage. 
But thing, it's, it's for someone who used to have Johnny Devlin's picture on his wall when I was about an, an eight or a nine year old when I bought my first guitar and then hung around outside the top 20 to see Ray and the boys going in for rehearsal just in case I caught a glimpse of Dave Russell's Fender tweed guitar case. Uh, cheap thrills, but um, it, it feels great to be in that company. It feels wonderful to be part of this community. I always feel that, so thank you very much. I'd just like to say uh, thanks very much. I'm the new boy in the band. I've only been with the guys for about 20 years, so uh, Lyle Kinney, the original bass player with Hello Sailor. This is for you, Lyle. Thank you very much, and thank you guys. Thank you. Yes, I'd just, I'd just like to acknowledge John Mitchell and Paul, Paul Hewson, two keyboard players from the early 70s. Um, neither of these gentlemen are with us anymore, so this is for John Mitchell and Paul Hewson, as well as me. Thank you. And being the drummer of the band, it's uh, been quite an effort to keep up with Graham. Um, but um, it's been difficult, but we've survived. Uh, 36 years, I think. Um, and boy, we look like it too. Uh, <laughs> but um, the, the, uh, Paul said something about Lyle before, and he made a lot of contributions to the band way back when we made all our hits. And um, I'd like to thank Lyle again too. And thank you for this award. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Of a blue lady to help me through the night. Me and my blue lady make it sound so right, alright. Go out dancing every club I know in town.
你的